Hey, how's it going? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise you hate. Today's topic is going to be how to stop overeating on the weekend. This is a big topic. I would say that probably every eight out of 10 clients that I work with have a hard time not overeating on the weekend and would typically basically admit to overeating on the weekend. So we're gonna tackle the three biggest areas that you will get in trouble with and that will continue your likelihood to overeat on the weekend, as well as provide some tips on how to reduce overeating on the weekend. And then at the very end, I'm gonna give you some of my drive-by tips. I use it in quotes because they're kind of these quick little tidbits that can really help you think about things. And I use these with my clients and they've actually proven to work. So this isn't just stuff that I thought of a, you know randomly before I made this video. This is actually stuff that I put into practice. So we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But let's talk about the first point. And this is the, this, this one I would say is probably the best place to start. And that is avoid restrictive dieting. Okay, every diet out there, whether it's keto or paleo or low carb, whatever you want to call it, has a restrictive component to it. And as long as you aren't, you know, eating foods that give you an allergic reaction or something like that, all food should be on the table, literally. Like you should be feel confident in being able to have whatever food that you want. Now, when I say that, I don't mean eating as much as you want. I mean having full range to eat any type of food you want, whether it's a carbohydrate, a protein, a fat, a less, you know, a more processed food, a less processed food. You shouldn't feel restrictive when you are trying to lose weight because a restrictive mindset makes things like overeating on the weekend highly likely. You are more likely to overeat or binge on food that you feel is special or that you can only have on the weekend. So by eliminating the idea that you can only have certain foods on the weekend, you start to feel more comfortable around having just a small amount of food. I know from personal experience that when I would only allow certain foods on the weekend and I would be restrictive, one of the things that I would typically do is I would overeat that specific food because I thought, well, I'm not gonna be able to get this food until next weekend, so I better have as much of it as I want, and that would typically lead to overeating. So by being more restrictive, you actually make it harder on yourself to not overeat the food, okay? So avoiding restrictive dieting is probably the most foundational tip that you wanna start with, okay? So that's number one. Number two, eat more high volume, low calorie foods, right? So in the bottom, in the description of this video, I'll put a list of very high volume, low calorie foods. And the idea is the more of these that you have in your meals every single day, the less likely you are to overeat. So this is a strategy that I use pretty much every single, ta every single day because I have a pretty high appetite, like a pretty strong appetite. And I found that for me personally, I like to eat until I'm full. And I would imagine that you do too. The problem is, is that our bodies do not understand when to stop based on calories. They do it based on how full we feel. So the volume of our food. So volume represents the amount of food, like a physical representation of the amount of food. And low calories is obviously a nice little benefit because we can eat more high volume food if they are also low calorie. Now the opposite of that would be something like potato chips, right? That's a, a food you can eat in high volume, but it also is really easy to stack up those calories. So by eating more high volume, low calorie foods, you fill up faster, but you're eating less total calories, which remember calories in total at the end of the day is what makes us whether uh, either gain weight, keep our weight the same or lose weight. So it's not the volume of food, it's the amount of calories. So by naturally including more high volume, low calorie foods, you're going to fill up sooner, which means you're gonna eat less total calories. And the way I use this on the weekend is I just eat a small portion of high volume, low calorie food as kind of like, think of it like a warm up, right? When you're, or when you're gonna work out, you warm up first and then you do your full workout, or at least you should be doing that. So think of that as the same as like kind of this approach is you eat a small portion of high volume, low calorie food, and then you have your meal, all right? So an example of this is what I personally do is I'll have a small bowl of kimchi, fermented vegetables. All right, you can also do things like pickles. There's a whole bunch of them. Again, I'll put the list down below so you can get an idea of what some of these low calorie, high volume foods look like. I'll have a small bowl of kimchi and then I'll have my full meal. And on average, I eat about 25% less of my full meal because I've already started to fill up my stomach 
with some high volume, low calorie foods. All right, so that is probably my number one strategy. That's why I put a little asterisk here is that in terms of effective strategies that I've seen work for my clients and for myself, because I definitely am not immune to overeating on the weekend. I have to be very mindful, I have to be conscious, and I don't always win the battle, but it's not about always winning, it's about doing the best you can to win as often as possible, all right? Nobody's perfect, nobody should feel the pressure to be perfect. So eating more high volume, low calorie foods throughout the day, especially on the weekend, can make overeating a lot easier to control especially on the weekend. Although I do this on the week, during the week too, during weekdays as well. And then number three is increase mindful eating practice. Okay, so we don't live in a world where you can just eat whatever you want, as you already have pretty much found out. If you're watching this video, you're probably looking for some tips of, on how to reduce how much you eat in terms of calories, even if that doesn't mean in terms of food, because we just talked about, it. you can eat a lot of food, but they have to be high volume, low calorie foods. And again, that list is below if you wanna uh, learn more about it but being mindful of, we, of what we eat. And this is especially important when you go out to, to eat. Because on the weekends, that's typically when you're gonna go out, you know, have a social outing with some friends or you're gonna go out drinking and food is probably going to be involved. So one of the things you have to know about eating at restaurants is they're gonna load the calories up, all right? They don't care about your health. They don't care how many calories are in the food. What they care about is making sure that you enjoy the food because if you enjoy it, you're more likely to come back. I mean, if you've been to a, a restaurant multiple times, you go because the food is good and you go because they probably have really good drinks as well. So being mindful when you eat is simply just understanding that you don't wanna just eat to, to eat, right? You wanna eat to satisfy your hunger and then move on with the rest of the outing. Now, I've, I've had plenty of clients come up to me and say, well, you know, that's very difficult in a situation where they have like hors d'oeuvres out or snacks and there's constantly things that you can just pick out, pick at. And a lot of times in social, social situations, what can happen is, is you just mindlessly eat, right? You're talking to somebody and you're, you know, you have some dip and, you know, whatever, a crack or whatever. And over time that can very, be very easily add up to a lot of calories. So what I recommend is, is in, for increasing mindful eating, there's a couple of things you can do. There's a lot of things you can do, but we'll just touch on one major one which is before you go out to a social outing, have a small amount of these high volume, low calorie foods. Again, it's a, it's a strategy for arming yourself to not let your hunger just dictate how much you eat, all right? Although I do recommend that for a lot of people to, to learn how your hunger and your satiety work as an intuitive practice, if you're eating really calorie dense foods, so like a really good example is like crackers. You can eat a lot of crackers, before you get to the point where you actually feel full from eating them. So those calories can add up. So in that, um, using your hunger as, an, as a tool to know whether you're full might not be the best strategy. So a lot of times using your hunger to tell you whether you you're actually need to stop eating or not doesn't work because the amount of calories in that food, because it's so calorie dense. Another great example is something like peanut butter, right? You can eat a lot of peanut butter and those calories are really gonna stack up because a very small amount has a lot of calories in it. That's what, it's what, it's what it means when I say calorie dense. It has a lot of compact calories in a very small amount, which is essentially the opposite of a high volume, low calorie food, just to kind of give you an idea. So increase the mindfulness during your eating. I'm not saying you have to like meditate before you eat or like meditate while you're eating. I'm just be conscious of what you're eating it doesn't have protein. Is it really just a, you know, kind of like a junk food? Is it highly processed? When I eat it, does it make me want to eat more? Like my Achilles heel when it comes to eating out is chips and salsa. You put a, you know, a basket of chips in front of me and I have one, I'm more than likely going to eat the entire thing, right? Because I, I just love them so much. They're so tasty. I love that salty feeling. And you might be that, that way too. In fact, I want you to put your comments down below and tell me what your trigger food is. What is a food that you, once you have one, it's really hard to stop eating. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But so increasing your mindfulness when you eat, just being like, hey, you know, am I eating this because I really want it, which is fine. Am I being mindful of how much I'm eating? Am I eating in a slow manner? Am I not like shoveling the food in my mouth? That's all really important, all right? 